Hello, every pony, and welcome back to Fandom Fridays, where we proceed to check out all fanfics that are not pony related. Why? Because it's the start of the superhero season, and it's time for some good old fast superhero movies. Yes, I am playing I want to catch a Marvel in 99, and I'm guessing that I am going to enjoy it. There will be others who will not. That's okay. Just don't be an asshole about it. So what better way to celebrate than doing a fanfic dedicated to a guy who hasn't had a really good movie representation since 2005. Seriously, DC EU. Supergirl has a better Superman than you. <sighs> And only on the cusp of doing Justice League did I finally get a Superman that I enjoy, and he's gone. <sighs> Sometimes I wonder if it's just better to get the Smallville writers. But you didn't come here to listen to me rant. You came here to listen to me read. And boy, am I going to read. I'm going to read a little uh, de Deku Deku fic. Called neither bird nor plane, it's Deku by Fox One Ply. So stay here as we here at the Terry Berry Memorial Library proud to present neither bird nor plane, it's Deku by Fox One Ply. Neither bird nor plane, it's Deku by Fox One Ply. What does that even mean? What's up, Fox on Pie? Vic? Vic? Everyone has different ideas of when it all started. Some people think it started back when we saw people who dressed like bats, and people who swung around golden lassos and saw clowns and businessmen and monsters. Others think it started when an army dressed in red came down from the sky and tried to lay waste to us all. Most people, though, they get started when a glowing baby was born in China, ushering in an era where most of the world would have superpowers of their own. And become just like those gods, the era of Quark. There are two people, though, they could all start when they took a vacation to get away from the world. Japan, July 15th, 20XX, 15 years prior. Lake Karugichi, one of the five lakes of Mount Fuji. Of the Fuji Five Lakes, Lake Karugichi is the second largest and situated at the lowest elevation, 800 meters, which accounts for its relatively cool summers and frequently icy winters. As the cool summers, along with a tremendously long shoreline, they have allowed Lake Karugichi to become a popular vacation spot in Japan, with many people go there to camp and get away from the world. This is very much the reason for a certain couple to be vacationing there. Alright, all set was said by a man after starting a campfire. The process was done by breathing fire out of his own mouth. Beautiful night for a fire, right, honey? You sure is, dear. The woman said what he said. Her la face lacked the same positivity that her words were meant to convey. You're lying, aren't you, Inko? N no, I'm not. Yes, you are. The night is very so far, tons of clouds blocking the stars, and a very shiny campfire. Look at this logger arrangement. There's only no presentation value in here. We'll be caught dead next to this fire if I wasn't the one who made it. Yashi, please. We both know it's not the fire. Mari right, sitting under her breath. Yashi kicked up a bit of dirt before saying next to Inko on a log facing the fire. I'm just frustrated, Inko. Yashi said, putting his head against her shoulder. I know, I am too. Inko said, not your fault though. It's not your own fault either. Why do you think that? I don't want you to think it's your fault either. I know that, but it's neither of our faults. But then that means we can't point fingers at anyone and go, Nice job screwing us over, jackass! This would be so much easier if we could do that, you know. I know, mean, Sassy. Life's just not like that, though. Sometimes things just happen. There's no one to get mad at. Life sucks sometimes. I know, I know. Inko said in a somber tone. After that, no more words were spoken between the two of them. He simply sat against one another. He see at the fire, doing their best to talk to enjoy each other's company. That was the plan right up to Hisasi's phone rang. 
Talk about a mood killer. Yes, he said, pulling his phone out of his pocket. He was about to decline the call, but paused when he saw the demon caller idea. It's work. Might be important, but... Go and take it. I can be by myself for a few minutes. He saw she could nod his head, twisting those green bangs apart, and kissed her forehead before stepping away from the campsite. Misasi ended up walking a few meters away from the campsite, surrounding himself with trees and putting his wife out of view. Finally, he answered his phone. Good evening, Professor, Misasi said. No, wait, it's gotta be boring in the streets, right? Indeed it is, Misasi, the voice on the other side of the line said, Professor. About 8 in the morning, last I checked on my watch. Never too early to get started on a large piece of work. It is for normal people. And how come I've seen you getting up at five to work? Um, just able to fake weirdness, I guess. Well, going off of that, I noticed you neglected to return to your weirdness, as I have got a single response for the latest reports I sent you. Wait, you sent me- Shit. Yes, he cursed, rubbing the back of his head. We both know how important this project is, Hisasi. I know. The entire world itself could be changed from the work we're doing, Hisasi. I know. Hisasi said, small burst of fire escaping his lips. Conversation went dead for a few seconds. I'm sorry for that, Hisasi, Professor said. You know how important this is. I shouldn't be talking to you like you don't. Even still, I should have gotten a response from you. What's going on? Nothing. I've just been a little busy with this get away from my wife and me. And I guess I'll let work get away from me. You're on vacation. At a time like this, it was kind of an emergency vacation. Not really for pleasure, just to get away from everything for a while. It's not intrusive. Would you mind telling me what's happened? He shot leaned back against a tree and exhaled another line of fire. It was a really poor substitute for a cigarette. Remember how I told you my wife and I are trying to stay a star family? Professor Ignacy. Well, we just got back from the doctor the other day. She's pregnant. Congratulations, his sassy, my boy. You're going to be a great father. I just know it. Can I be the godfather? I always wanted to be a godfather, Hisasi. Well, yeah. That's not going to happen because we can't have any kids. Once again, fire shot out of Hisasi's mouth. And some hitting a tree branch and knocking it to the ground, fully aflame. In a panic, Hisasi quickly snapped out the fire, cursing under his breath the whole while. Oh, well, now that you've finished whatever that was, I'll finish removing my foot from my mouth and allow me to apologize again, the Professor said. No, that's right, Professor. If I didn't get mad at you, I'd just get mad at some kid working the register at Big Burger for giving me the wrong chains. Nico and I, we spent weeks and weeks trying to do it the old-fashioned way. Every time we took the test, it came up negative. We finally decided to go to the doctor and see what we were doing wrong. Turns out the issue wasn't with the technique, but the people trying to use it. Oh, my, the Professor said. And my greatest of sympathy, Hisashi, for as much as that might be worth. It's worth a lot, honestly, Hisashi said, laying on a relaxed breathe of fire. So yeah, that's why I didn't get around to checking my email. Right after we got the news, I took us out of town to get away from everything for a bit. Have you two considered other options at all? I mean, we haven't talked about it, but now we're both thinking about it. We both really wanted some time to calm down before getting back into it. Plus, stuff like surrogates and adoptions take a lot of time and money. I'm not sure we really have. Too bad babies are still falling out of the sky. Yes, that is such a crying shame. If I remember some advice, he's asking, Oh, shoot, sorry. How to attend something. Be back in a minute. Take your time. I don't know where to be. Plus, this went through the other end of the line. He's asking, moved his phone away from his ear, slants to the dirt. I don't want to talk to you. The only thing keeping his mind occupied was a bit of stargazing. A clear light disk, away from the state lights, the sky filled to the brim with celestial lights. Even with the green palace in the sky shining as bright as it did, the luminescence remained unchallenged. The one that seemed to be getting bigger was especially unchallenged in that respect. Bigger at an increasingly fast rate, it seemed, and directed its general area, too. Oh shit! Saucy shouted. Where Saucy knew it? Giant fireballs in the sky. Plain enough for anyone to see. Lake Karogichi was lit up as if someone was shining a massive spotlight on the water surface. 
Sassy could feel the heat coming off of it, even from how high it was. Mesmerized by a sudden appearance and intense beauty, he found himself immobilized, unable to do anything else but stare in awe. Very fortunate for Hisasi, this did not result in his untimely demise. As the fireball veered right, before he could hit him, he kept onto that path, so eventually hitting the ground with its tremendous crash. Sorry about that, Hisasi. You need to take care of the project. Fessor's voice came out from the phone. Now, I'll pass you in your life. Yeah, I'm going to have to call you back. Hisasi said, hugging up his phone before the professor could see anything. He took off in a sprint. When Hisasi returned to the campsite, Hiko was staring in the direction the fireball flew in. Ice wide and jaw dropped. I'm guessing you saw it too? Hisasi said, uh-huh. Man, not every day you see a strange star across the planet. Uh-huh. They could go ahead and turn into a walrus and start living on the moon. Uh-huh. In a few seconds, Inka finally decided to turn around towards Hisasi and pay attention to him. Let's go check it out. Really? You sure that's the best idea? Come on, Inko. You know every camper decided the lake's going to be here in five minutes. Might as well try to be up to it. Besides, it's be sitting here and feeling sad and stuff. Inko hummed herself and dragged her fingers against his thigh. Guess he couldn't hurt us. That's the spirit! Hisasi grabbed it onto Inko's hand. The two took off of the crash. Hisashi was being honest for himself. He felt nervous about this as his wife clearly did. But like he said, it starts as a much better way of getting your minds off of life than just bumping around a fire. Besides, if it turned out to be a me or a comparison of as of any yet discovered element that could be named after himself, why wouldn't he take a look at it? As it turned out, when the crash of force was not me or composed entirely of his side of him, Instead, laying the sand of crater, turned up turn and tree scared about. It was some sort of large metallic contraption. Oh. My. God. Iko said. Her ticket as she and Sasasi made their way into the crater. Right? I wonder what that is. Sasasi said, rubbing his hands against the surface of the object. Nails so smooth. The design so professional. Far more than anything we ever have in Japan. Might be a satellite from an American company, like Lexcore or Wayne Powers. I think it belongs to whoever owns the symbol. Eco directed Hisasi's attention to the partially crusted machine. On the stars was a colored pentagon with what looked like the letter S inside of it. No matter how much Hisasi thought about it, he couldn't remember any company that had that kind of insignia. Wait, what the hell? Hisasi moved away from the insignia. Towards the back end of the machine. Look at this propulsion, Inko. The shape of the ensign. The placement of these fins. This isn't the kind of stuff you find on a satellite. Also, it's like a spaceship, Inko said, her face contorting in persistent awkwardness. Hey, that's not funny, Inko, his sassy replied with sound laughter. It's the kind of joke that makes everyone on the train turn to you in disgust. We don't need spaceships anymore. And if there's one something in here, we don't really want to be in here. Then his sassy heard it. He heard crying. Crying from inside the ship. Oh no. His sassy grass. Oh no. Inko started crying and got loud. Is there a baby in there? Sick of words left her mouth. Inko pointed her hands at the lid and threw them back towards her body. The lid, ever so slightly, started moving in the same direction. Inko, what are you doing? Sassy questions fell on deaf ears as he repeated the question. Inko, does she know that this is a Bad idea. His husky's question fell on deaf ears as he repeated the action. Inko, will you get really bad if someone sees you doing this? His husky's question fell on deaf ears. His husky wanted to ask a fourth question. Before he could, he heard what sounded like footsteps above a conversation. Ah, damn it! Cursing to himself, his husky ran over the lid of the spaceship and started lifting it off with all of his might. It wasn't much might. His husky? Inko asked. All the muscles of her body ceasing. Don't just stand there, Inko. Keep pulling! With a quick nod, Inko went trying back using her quirk on the side of the spaceship. So as you could tell just by looking at Inko, that she was pushing herself. Her quirk was at its best when it used to move something that was small, lightweight or common easy to both. So I expected her to just make a large, heavy piece of metal fly into the air and was out of the question. So as he was in much better in that regard. I mean, the build of a bamboo suit and all. Only spent more time in the lab mixing chemicals than he did lifting weights. 
But even if they could accomplish something like this alone, here might be a different story. In a different story it was, with Vistasi's strength and Eco's quirk combined, the lid was pulled upwards, torn off the ship entirely. Thanks to that, Hisasi and Nika had a perfect view of the contents of the ship. This is Hisasi thought, and Hishi feared, something inside, crying at the top of his lungs, was a baby. A tiny little thing with eight freckles and a small clump of black hair on his head, split curls stared at his forehead. It really is a baby. Nika said with a smile. Surprised it was so human. Hisasi thought as he pulled the baby out of the ship. So it was free to confide to the ship. The frightened child looked at Hisasi Sarah's face, stuck crying and smiled at him. I don't think Hisasi smiled back. I think it's right here somewhere. What do you think it is? That green lantern was up in space stopping this kind of stuff from happening. Okay, we need to go now. Hisasi said to Eko, and he beamed over to her while he grabbed the torn lid. With that, the two of them ran for the crash site and were gone. After returning to the campsite, Hisasi and Eko shoved everything into the back of their car. We drove away from White Kawaguchi as fast as legally allowed. We drove for two hours before reaching the Suzuka Prefecture, barely saying a word to each other all the while. Eventually, they found a chance at a small hotel in Suzuka City. As they were in their room, Hisasi turned on the TV. Immediately, he turned to a news program. What we believe to be an alien spacecraft, a reporter said, standing in the very same spaceship they discovered. Hours ago, multiple captives here at Lake Kawaguchi either heard or saw what they initially believed to be a meteor landing at the campgrounds. As you can see here, it was anything but. Judging by the size of the spacecraft, there could be only room for one person. And with the top completely open like this, whatever was in here completely disappeared. Police and local heroes are searching the area of Mount Fuji for any signs of alien life. We soon expand their search to the surrounding cities. Everyone should be cautious and go outside as little as possible until further notice. It's as he turned out the TV. Threw the remote to the floor. We took an alien. We took an alien. Oh my god, we took an alien. Can't believe we did something so stupid and dangerous! I didn't even got this being taken before, and now I'm stealing little alien babies! What the fuck was us? My father was allowed to see this. You go, Hishashi, I didn't fight no lantern war for you just to go and pick up some little spaceman off the street. So it got straight to the authorities when we took this thing out. No, when we saw the ship, this makes everything so much worse. Why did we take that baby? Why didn't we tell anyone? I'm the only one freaking out about this. Eko, freak out about this with me! It's as he turned to face his wife. Only seeing her sitting on the bed, holding a baby tickling it, making her laugh over and over again. Eko, please! Oh, sorry, honey. Eko said, seizing her tickling. This is serious, and you're not even paying attention. No, I heard you just fine. You were rambling on and on about how we shouldn't have taken an alien with us. We're gonna get into a bunch of trouble for this, right? Well, yes, more or less, sums it up. Still, I shouldn't be the only one freaking out about this. If anyone finds out that we were the ones who took it. Him. Yeah. Inka cut in. What? I decided to deeper. It's and the baby isn't an it, it's a boy. Fine, fine. If anyone finds out we were the ones who took him, our lives are over, Inko. I work in the government. I hear whispers about this all the time. Guys in black suits will be at our doorstep in the dead of night, cars off for interrogation and torture. After all that, all our neighbors and family will think we just disappeared. When we really disappeared. Do you want that to happen? No. Inko said, by seeking slightly. In that case, I'll make sure no one finds out about this, right? We left before anyone got to the ship. The camping there didn't require any reservation. I don't think they'll be able to find us. True, that would be pretty hard. Even so, there's still a 112 ounce problem we need to deal with. How are we supposed to do with it? Him! I actually have an idea about that, Hisashi. Glad one of us does. What is it? Inko smiled at Hisashi before looking down at the baby again. Hisashi's face fell. No! Looks like a normal baby. No! And everyone's looking for a green pink monster man. No! It's hard to find something when it's plain sight. No, 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 no! So we don't want anyone to know if we're involved in this. I was thinking that. No! A large stream of fire saw Hisashi's mouth. Since he walked behind Inko's head. I was thinking we could keep him. Inko said, ignoring all of that. Are you insane? You want us to raise an alien baby? So what if it's an alien? Not like all aliens are evil. The Martian Manhunter certainly wasn't evil. Besides, it's just a baby. And babies can't hurt people. Yeah, but the people they grow up into can. Besides, how do we know he's even actually a baby? Sassy stepped over to Inko. 
a dead look in the face. For all we know, it comes to a planet that looks just like babies, and they all use their overwhelming cuteness to infiltrate societies and destroy them from the inside! The baby giggled and squeezed Sassy's nose. Does it? It's brown as urine. Sassy said, removing the baby's hand from his nose. Sassy, does he think we can, we need to be doing this? Nico said, the whole reason we were there is because we wanted to forget about the fact we could never have a child on our own. Instead, a baby falls into our laps. Can't be coincidence. It absolutely is a coincidence. If you looked up coincidence in the dictionary, the definition would read, What is happening to Hiyasi and Ego right now? What do we do? Leave him in orphanage? Down him in the bathtub? Hiyasi didn't answer her. He sat down at a desk and stared out the window. It's present and readable. Hiyasi, the right thing to do, and you know it. Not for us, but for this poor child who's all alone in the world. If you didn't already know that, you didn't already care about that. Wouldn't it help me take him out of his ship, right? Hisashi didn't say anything. He said, opting knock all the pants off the desk with a forceful sweep of his arm. Okay, okay. First thing in the morning, I called the professor to tell him what's going on. He had to make some fail because adults and peepers. We'll wait for a week before going back to my foster and tell everyone we left to adopt a baby. Sassy, because there was a smile. Sassy got up from the desk and moved to the bed, wrapping Ego up in his arm. I don't feel good about this. I feel even worse leaving so defenseless baby out of his own. Plus, maybe I'm like you, and I don't want this to be a coincidence, crazy as it sounds. I don't think it sounds crazy at all. Of course, I was the first one to bring it up, so I might not be the best person to ask. Ego said, plenty of kiss on his Sassy's cheek. Why are you going to name him? Right, we said we had a king, I named him a boy, and you named him was a girl. All the men on my side had the same continuity that reads, It's been a while. Um, you guys can't read it, but, uh, t trust me, it, it, it's a line with a crossover and two other lines. This little guy, don't know where it came from. But he had been forced to leave his home. He had to leave, so I was thinking a while to get there. Well, Sika could bind the characters and make Izuku. What do you think? Love it. Our own son, Izuku Midoriya. The baby, now christened as Izuku Midoriya, laughed as his new parents kissed him on the sheet. You probably figured it out already. That baby they're with? That's me. My name is Izuku Midoriya, and I'm an alien. I was sent off for whatever planet I was born on to live here. Isashi and Inko Midoriya took me on their own. Even though I was an alien, even though no one liked the kind of thing I was, they never treated me like anything other than their own son. Thanks to their love and support, I became the person I am today. And because of their love and support, I was able to become the greatest hero in the world. Japan, April 20XX, present day. Uh, Midoriya Ken, am I paying this right? I'm doing your high school teacher said. Yes, sir. I really don't want to be a hero. He would make reply for a look, scared looking boy, his head against the desk. I should probably mention there's some bumps on the road. Nothing more to say. I really like the idea, that's why I chose to read it today. It sounded interesting, and it's a good, good start. Now, if you excuse me, I'm going to enjoy the small scale snowstorm that's happening outside my window. Now it's let down, now's just more to go. Bye!